The statement, a picture says a thousand words, is cliche, but it's probably cliche for a reason. And while it may not be a literal exact equivalence, the point is really that pictures can communicate a lot of information. But even this is kind of an understatement because the value of the visual is more than just purely the amount of information conveyed, but also how quickly and efficiently it can be interpreted. Consider one of the recent videos in this series, episode 4 on subsets. That video script is roughly 950 words and the video comes in at around 6 minutes and 15 seconds. Granted, I do go into a lot of detail about the concept of subsets there, how to notate them, and much more, but what if I told you that you could convey almost just as much with just a single image? Specifically, a single image that takes only a few seconds to draw and even less time to interpret. That certainly seems to me like something that we should investigate. Now, over the next few videos in this series, we'll be exploring some new concepts in set theory, as well as taking a look at how we can use these ideas in application. As the problems we discuss become more challenging and involved, it will be increasingly important to be able to rely on such visuals to quickly and efficiently ground our understanding. You may be thinking, but sets feel so abstract, or can be huge lists of numbers, or defined by any host of different complicated criteria. How could we possibly visualize them? Well, it actually only takes a rectangle and a few circles. Let's start with the rectangle. In the context of any given problem, there is usually some specific set that we're considering. For example, if we were having a discussion about the history of the NFL, we'd probably only be considering NFL players as our set. So Peyton Manning would be a part of our discussion, but Derek Jeter would not. Jerry Rice would be a part of our discussion. Tiger Woods would not. This puts a bound on what we'll focus on for that specific conversation. This is what we call a universal set. A universal set, U, is a set that contains all of the elements being considered in a given problem or discussion. Just like the real world universe is all existing matter and space as a whole, the universal set is all of the stuff that exists in our context for our problem. So to continue with our football example, the universal set there would be every athlete who has ever competed in the NFL. We can draw this simply with a rectangle. Inside of this rectangle, you can imagine a point for every athlete who's ever competed. Tom Brady, Ray Lewis, Larry Fitzgerald, and hundreds more all have a place somewhere in here. Outside of this rectangle would be literally everything else. Derek Jeter, Tiger Woods, sure. Yellow Starburst, Bicycles, the number four and a half, or whatever else that you could possibly think of that's not an NFL player. But we don't need to worry about any of that now because we've got this rectangle to represent our universal set. This is our focus. From here, representing a set is as simple as drawing a circle. For example, we might want to represent the set of Atlanta Falcons players. We can draw a circle and give it a label, perhaps A for Atlanta. Now, this represents every player who has ever competed for the Atlanta Falcons. So inside this circle, we would place every athlete that belongs to that set. Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, etc. We could also similarly represent other teams, perhaps the Green Bay Packers, where athletes like Aaron Rodgers would live. Or, Maybe instead of focusing on teams, we wanted to consider conferences as sets. You could draw two circles, one to represent the AFC, the other to represent the NFC. Now, for example, all of the players from the Patriots would belong to the AFC circle, and all of the players for the Saints would belong to the NFC circle, and so on for all of the remaining teams. This type of picture is known as a Venn diagram. And Basically, to summarize, we draw a rectangle to represent our universal set, in other words, whatever we're considering for our particular discussion, and we can draw circles within that to represent different sets within our universe. Sometimes these sets may overlap, like a traditional picture of a Venn diagram that you might be thinking of, but they don't necessarily have to. Now, you may be thinking, this seems easy enough, but you also promised us a way to visualize subsets. True. And so, we have a circle within a circle. Remember, set A is a subset of set B, 
when each element of A also belongs to B. So if the interior of this circle here represents everything in set A, well, now these are all also in the interior of B if we've drawn A as a circle within set B. Thus, we have a picture representing A as a subset of B, and as promised, only took us a few seconds to draw. And now that we have an understanding of how to visualize these sets, even less time to identify. Admittedly, this may not seem like much at first, but in the next video we'll begin our study of set operations, which essentially are different ways to manipulate sets. And for those set operations, this technique for visualizing sets will become especially handy. In the meantime, I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and have a great rest of your day.